As today's special bonus episode of Playing Above the Line is being recorded and released in real time, the world is facing some unprecedented challenges as it relates to the spread of COVID-19, which is also known as coronavirus. Welcome to Playing Above the Line, where we interview entrepreneurs, business owners, and community activists to get their thoughts and perspectives on leadership. Playing Above the Line is sponsored by Aviso Group, a business consulting and accounting firm focused on preparing clients for the future through innovation and positive growth. Welcome back to uh, another special edition of COVID-19 episode of Playing Above the Line. I'm Alan, your host, and once again, I'm joined by uh, co-host Dennis Sharon. Dennis, thanks for being with me again. Greetings. We also have with us today our Director of Client Accounting Services for the Viso Group, Aaron Thompson. And Aaron, thanks for uh, coming to chat with us today. No problem. Happy to be here. All right. Look, so we're we're still in the in, in the throes of this coronavirus mess that we have going on. I know that you have been immersed in all things payroll tax related, credit related, unemployment related um, since the Congress and, and the Department of Labor started uh, handing in all, down all of these uh, directives and passing new laws to stimulate the economy and that kind of thing. So let me just throw it to you and just ask you, I'm an employer. I have employees. What are some of the things that I need to be considering? What are some of the uh, of the of the things out there that are available to help me with my cash flow as far as paying my employees? Uh, what does all that look like now? Well, Alan, I think you're right. I think the first thing that employers are going to need to look at is their cash flow and they can get with their accountant. They can call us and we can kind of help them look through that picture. As we're looking at their cash flow, that's going to help us make the decisions that we need to do to um, determine how their business is going to continue in the next couple of weeks up to months, however long we're in this crisis. So, The first thing that we need to look at is, you know, do we need to furlough employees? Do we need to let their employees file for unemployment? And how do we go about doing that? So um, if it has been determined that cash flows are not where they need to be at this point in time to keep employees working, then we can look at furloughing those employees, but the employers need to know that under the new guidelines that they can file unemployment for their employees. And that's really what the states are asking them to do. Um, The way they go about doing this is there is a form that will have to be faxed in called an employer affidavit. So we'll fax in that form and then they will get a log on to log on to the unemployment website. Once they receive this, they can go on and actually file unemployment for their employees. Now that's going to do a few different things for them. That's going to be the way they tell their um, they tell the Department of Labor that this is COVID-19 related. It's going to protect their unemployment rate from increasing. It's going to help their employee be on a faster track to get this unemployment into their pockets. It's also going to make them be eligible for the federal government's um, $600 um, addition to the Alabama or whatever state they're in, regular unemployment check. So um, for the state of Alabama, the unemployment check is $275 if it's COVID related. And so that's kind of a straight fee across the board for the state of Alabama. So that way, um, you know, the employees can kind of base off of that the amount of money they're going to get in. So the total would be $875 a week. So is that does that apply for people who lose their job completely or laid off you know fully or and reduced hours folks i mean is it the same amount for regardless of whether i have reduced hours or whether i'm fully laid off so the department of labor when you do file for the employees you um have a box in there where you tell the the state department whether these employees are going to be temporarily working or whether they're furloughed completely so once you fill that out the department of labor will determine the amounts based on the information that you give them i got you okay so aaron a couple questions on that you mentioned how the the business needs to notify the state unemployment office first before these employees are eligible for this so from the employee perspective how are they going to know how, how is this going to be communicated to employees or, you know, because some employees may have just go out and go right to the unemployment office the same day they're furloughed or are temporarily laid off? Well, what the employer is going to need to do is when they um, do furlough their employees, there is also the employee portion that needs to be signed. So there is a document that the employee will put their social security number and sign on there saying that they are allowing their employer to file unemployment for them. On this document, they will also have um, a question where it asks if they want 
income tax withheld from that check or not. So um, during these times, employees might feel like they want more money in their pocket, but in the back of their mind, they also need to realize if they choose not to be taxed on this unemployment amount, come income tax time in 2021, when they're filing their 2020 return, that those unemployment wages will be subject to income tax. So um, they really need to think about that before they you know, just mark no on that document. Right. Yeah. So it, it's important one that uh, we get a hold of or small business understand that they have a part in making sure that they protect these employees too and thoroughly explain why they need to handle it this way. That's correct. The form is not very clear. It just says, are you going to allow your employer to make the deci- make the declaration if you want income taxes withheld? And then it says income taxes withheld, yes or no. So I think many people may look at that and say, no, I don't want them to decide or that, you know, they may misinterpret it, w- what it's really saying. So that's the unemployment side, but there's also a couple of pretty significant cash flow savings on the payroll tax side, Right. This is correct as well. All right. So can you kind of tell us a little bit about about those two things? Okay. There's a few different things that came out in the CARES Act where we can um, help small businesses keep cash in their businesses. One of them is the refundable payroll tax credit. So what this says is there's going to be a credit um, that these employers can use, and it's 50% of the wages paid by employers to the employees during the COVID-19 crisis can be kept inside the business. So this credit is available to employers who, one, either their operations were fully or partially suspended due to a COVID-19 related shutdown order. This can be anything from a government mandated shutdown to something like how the ADA shut down the dental practices. So either way, you know, some of our businesses may fall under that. The majority of our businesses will fall under the second part in there that says if your gross receipts declined by more than 50% when compared to the same period last year, that you can keep 50% of their payroll in the company. So in order to do that, you're going to have to include all of the health benefits or any other fringe benefits in this calculation. And then the credit is going to allow you to keep this money by using your quarterly wage report or however you pay your payroll taxes, whether it's monthly or whatever cap you may fall under. Right. So this is an immediate benefit because basically when when, when employers are remitting their payroll taxes, they're going to reduce those amounts that they remit by the 50% of wages they're paying, right? So this is a, an immediate a benefit to them. That is correct. And they can take this all the way back to March 13th. Um, so if you can look back at your gross receipts starting on March 13th through the end of the year, December 31st of 2020, this will be in effect. Okay. So this is a, a credit and it's refundable. Now, the, 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 the other thing that's available that's a pretty big deal, I think, is the deferral of the payroll taxes. And this is not necessarily... Um, free money, but it is a deferral of the taxes you have to pay in right now, right? That's correct. So this deferral is of the 6.2% Social Security tax that the employers pay to match the employee. What the CARES Act stipulated on this was that when you go to make your tax payments, you can defer paying the employer portion. Now, we still have to pay the employee portion in, but we can defer the, the employer portion. So this is going to be due 50% by December 31st of 2021. And the other half of the deferral is due by December 31st, 2022. So employers do have a good amount of time to make those payments. But you're right, it's not it's not straight relief. It is a deferral. All right, but that's, that's still a pretty good, I mean, you're talking about a year and a half, really, before you have to pay the first 50% and then another year after that. So that is a significant time, time deferral. Yes. The first credit. The 50% credit is immediately just a reduction of what you have to remit. So with that credit, is there a point in time where the employer has to then remit that credit or is it forgiven? It's forgiven. And is it forgiven as a grant or is it? So I think, it, yes. So the credits are reported each quarter on the employer's payroll tax return and are refundable to the extent that the credit exceeds the employer's payroll tax liability. And I think it's it could be for wages paid up through December 31st, 2020, right? So, yeah. Right. So, so okay. the act literally states that we could take it back, which is 
something that we haven't seen a lot of um, the legislation come out and say that we could take the amounts backwards. But this one is letting us take it back to March 13th. And you can use it all the way through the end of 2020 as long as you still fall under one of those two categories. Well, Aaron, thank you. I know that, um, I mean, this has been a lot, obviously, and it's been coming fast and furious, and you've done a great job. Your, your group has done a great job of, of keeping track of these things. And the information that you gave, I think, is is, is great information for employers, uh, a lot of great benefits there. So we appreciate you coming and, and, and telling us a little bit about that today. No problem. I'm happy to be here, and I just hope that, you know, we can help our businesses continue to take advantage of any of the legislation that they can. Absolutely. Dennis, thank you. Thank you, sir. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes and Spotify. It definitely helps us in the ratings, and it also makes it easier for other folks to find the podcast. As always, a big thanks to producer Kerry Wolf and editor Johnny Gwynn. Playing Above the Line is sponsored by Aviso Group. If you want to know more about who we are and what we do, you can visit our website at avisogroup.com. That's A-V-I-Z-O group.com. You can also check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thanks for listening.